Let's quickly talk about how to benchmark Camunda. And therefore, I will use the um, Camunda Cloud benchmark on the Camunda Community Hub. So that's something you can use as well. And what I'm benchmarking today is, um, is a SaaS cluster. I created that um, already. It's a small cluster here, an S cluster, if you're familiar with the, with the sizing. And I already created um, some credentials and I checked out the project and I added the credentials to uh, my application property. So now this benchmark project can talk to my cluster and will actually run the load generation, the starter on my local machine talking to the cloud. And for a small cluster, this is actually sufficient. What I want to do um, at the same time is I want to want to um, look at the metrics this benchmark starter creates and therefore I start a local Prometheus and Grafana in order to look at that. If you want to do the same, um, you can simply use the Docker compo Compose file, which is provided here. So that's exactly what I will do. And this will start up the um, basically pull Prometheus and Grafana and start it up and already um, create the right data source um, to listen to um, the Spring Boot application on port 8088. So that's kind of already configured. So if you don't change anything there, it should simply work. So Grafana should be up by now. So I can look at either um, if I want to add Prometheus. Um, okay, that works. And at Grafana as well. So the default login is admin admin. I have to change the password. I always change it to admin admin on a local machine. So there we go. And then I have my dashboard now there for the benchmark. Okay, no data. That makes a lot of sense because the benchmark is not yet running. What I can do then is um, start the benchmark. Let's do that. And while, while it's starting up, um, we can talk about two or three things. The first is like, um, this is the BPMN process, which is contained in there. So you will see that um, it has 10 service tasks. So that's kind of a medium sized process. Um, every of these service tasks will have a simulated delay of 200 milliseconds. That's kind of if that service task would call an external endpoint that might take 200 milliseconds to make it a bit more realistic. And we have two timers which wait for um, one minute each. So then you can do the math 10 times 200 milliseconds. That's two seconds and two minutes. So two minutes and two seconds should be the overall cycle time of that process instance. And what I do as well is I start with a rate of 25 process instances per second. And the benchmark then will, will check if it gets like, if that's too much for the current cluster, then it gets back pressure. So we'll reduce the rate, or if the rate is too low, it will increase it again. So after some time, it should find an optimal starting rate. So the process instances, um, enough process instances will be started to utilize the cluster, but at the same time, you can still complete all that jobs, all that service tasks. So no process instances are piling up. That's kind of the goal. And the, this project should do that more or less automatically. What you can see is, um, it already did something here. So it started up. It actually deployed the process somewhere up there should be the process deployment, ah, not in the mood of searching that now. And then um, it started the benchmark with uh, 25 plus instances per second. And then every 10 seconds it prints something on the console where you can see um, what's currently happening. So in the last um, 10 seconds, it started 20, 249 process instances, 18 of that starting requests got back pressure. They are not processed. So um, the cluster is utilized and there are not yet any jobs completed, which will change actually, um, a no, no process instance completed, which is clear can't be before two minutes and two seconds. Other otherwise it would be magic, <laughs> uh, weird magic, black magic. But um, we see that jobs are already completed, right? So 
639 in the last interval 850 here and you see um, this is increasing at the same time you see that normally back pressure is also increasing in the beginning or not too much here so you will see you get only a little bit of back pressure so the starting rate might be, might be okay for the current cluster we get a bit of back pressure completing more and more jobs because also after the first timer um, you get more jobs in parallel which means the back pressure increases a little bit right um, we always look at the percentage of back pressure compared to the starting rate and if this is getting too big we're reducing it which we should see in a minute here so back pressure is too high 22 percent we consider 10 percent a good amount 10 percent of the requests for finding the optimal um, load so we're reducing slowly and so on and so forth so this goes on and on and on the actually easier way of looking at that is um, Grafana so what you can see is it's already um, working so if we look at the last five minutes um, we started and then you see the number of started process instances per second the rate and you see that um, back pressure is slowly increasing that leads to a slowly um, decreasing starting rate and an increasing rate of job completions we haven't yet did we finish um, process instances already yeah I'm talking for for long enough so we already finished um, process instances um, within roughly um, here um, 150 uh, seconds which two minutes is 120 122 so we're we're not at like the optimum but it's also not that far off so that for me makes a lot of sense uh, da, 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 da. yeah and um basically this is it so you can you can watch that running for quite a bit which i will pause the recording now to fast forward into uh, probably in 30 minutes okay we fast forwarded a bit <laughs> and what you can see is that after like 10 to 15 minutes it, it, it basically found a relatively stable plateau of, of things and you can also see that this is roughly around uh, 170 jobs completed per second and roughly uh, let's say 18 process instances started per second and this is actually also like this does make sense because we have that factor 10 in our process model right for every process instance we have 10 service tasks so it needs to complete 10 times the um, service tasks then start the process instances so that makes a lot of sense and what you can also see is like result wise the reported cycle time of the um, process instances um, for, for a short time in the beginning, it was really around 124 seconds and 122 seconds is the, the calculated optimum. So we were pretty close to that on the, on the average here, but um, we're now paneling around 130, uh, 132, which is fine for totally fine for this use case. So I would say that's um, this is now what we found for this cluster. As a result, we can we can process roughly 80, 19, or 20 process instances per second. Okay, if we if we run this for probably an hour and then take an average, we should have a good good idea of what this cluster can do. What I don't want to want to dive into now is like how could we probably improve the cluster that that would be a totally different question or understanding certain characteristics i just want to benchmark this, what i can do right what i <laughs> still i can't keep my fingers off looking into what's actually happening in my cluster and for if you run self-managed you can also do that you will have all these dashboards and Grafana reports available. If you run cloud, you cannot easily look into your cluster like I do. I just connect it to my cluster with um, the right Grafana dashboard. And then I can see 
more or less the same same picture here. So um, I have roughly 175 tasks completed per second and roughly 17 to 18 process uh, yeah process instances completed per second. So that's more or less the same number, which is good, <laughs> which confirms my uh, assumptions. We see that we have a back pressure rate roughly between four and eight percent. So also that makes sense in a way. And you can also look at certain throughput numbers, like um, for example, here, process instances created per second, it pendles around these like 15 to 20 completion, the same job creation, more or less between 150 and like 170, 180 and completed as well. So this is, it's a relatively stable line that that all makes a lot of sense. And you have to calculate some buffer anyway. So this, for me, that line would be sufficient to make a, to make, um, to basically define a, what this cluster can do limit. And the one thing that I, that I won't say is if, if you if you are still in the process of figuring out if that cluster configuration is a good one actually, or if you if you have to tune something, um, what what I always look at first is like what's the resource consumption. And what you can see here is, and I want to quickly um, look at only my um, workflow engine, so the CVs. Um, oh. And that was a bad idea, <laughs> sorry. Um, what you can see is that in an S cluster, they have one virtual CPO. So it's a relatively small cluster. They don't have, they don't get much resources. But what you can see is that they are not 100% of the time, but most of them are, are really at capacity, at least regularly. So if the CPU line is close to that one, that's that's a good sign that we do something correctly. If if they would be idle all the time, it means the bottleneck is somewhere else. So bottleneck could be CPU, could be memory, could be um, I/O, could be disk. So these kind of different views on that give you an idea what's currently happening, and you wanna wanna get it to a state where where the basically the I/O, the network traffic, is a limiting factor because that means the cluster is doing everything it can. But again, not diving into this. Um, so I hope this was uh, enlightening for how to do benchmarks of your cluster. And um, this project will help you doing this. You could see that for um, benchmarking a small cluster, an S cluster, I can simply do that from home from my machine. If I want to want to run bigger benchmarks for bigger clusters, I might um, want to also like scale out that startup project. And then I probably also run that in Kubernetes somewhere, right? Or if you want to do overnight tests or something like that. But um, it's relatively simple to get started. So um, I can totally encourage you to do so. Thanks for listening. <laughs>